going on everybody? My name is Ben Cleveland and I've been working with Torque Masters. I'm here to show you the latest and greatest that they have out for the Can-Am Smart Lock Front Differential. It's going to be a game changer. Anybody who's wanting a true four-wheel drive in their X3, Defender, whatever they have running this differential. This is going to be a quick intro video and I'm going to get right down into the installation process. Tools you're going to need are pretty basic, uh, T30, 12 millimeter, a couple screwdrivers, a couple pry bars, uh, wire wheel, some Loctite, that's about it. It's a pretty simple procedure. Alright, um, we're going to start out with differential outside of the machine already. First step, you need to remove your actuator here. You do not want to break that. It's just four T30 bolts, three on the side, one on the top. Pop it right on out. It's got a nice O-ring in there. It seals up fantastic. All right. Lay a differential on the passenger side, and you're going to get your 12 millimeter. Pull all of these cover bolts off. All right. Once you get that off, Can-Am has made provisions in the diff to pry up a little bit, separate this cover from the housing. There's an O-ring in there that seals the cover to the main differential case. So don't put screwdriver in there too far and tear that. There you go. All right, when you pull this apart, you're gonna have a shim right here on the bottom side of your carrier. You need to make sure that stays on the bearing lined up. You're also going to have a shim on the top side of the bearing on the driver's side. When you keep that to the side, you're going to have to reuse that. Alright, what we have left now is your carrier. It's getting replaced with a torque lock. you got a tone ring here that is going to be reused. So you have to save that. Be careful when you're prying it up. It's very thin. It can get distorted and bent. So just simple movements. Get that popped right up. Just like that. Now, the bearing rides inside that case is another story. A couple big screwdrivers. Get under it. Pry that joker up. Good even pressure. Swap some pry bars so I can get a little more leverage. Bearing is off. I'm going to reuse that. So keep that to the side too. Next, you're going to need your 14 millimeter socket. Pull these ring gear bolts off. Now what I like to do is flip this thing over like that. Take your favorite dead blow. You have two alignment dowels on this. Try to find the alignment dowels and hold it and spin it. Give the ring gear a couple good slaps with a dead blow. And she's starting to move back. pop off just like that. This carrier is not reusing. When you pull this driver side uh, axle gear out, you're not reusing that either. But if there is a shim on this driver side axle gear going against the ring gear, you have to reuse that. It's built into the design of the locker. If it doesn't have it, then you don't have to worry about it. Simple as that. All right. Let's show you all this beautiful masterpiece here. When you get this, it will be 99% assembled. These are your new axle gears. Made out of 9310. Really strong material. Really durable. Inside, 
the carrier in between your two cam gears you've got two springs these will be already in the carrier just make sure that they are standing straight up and aligned back up shipping can do some uh, pretty nasty things so we're going to make sure that those are standing straight up and ready to go back in place just like that set that there since we since we do not have a shim on the driver's side axle gear, you do not have to reuse it. Two dowels, you're going to line them back up with the dowel holes on the carrier, set it in place. So all we're going to do is set it in place for right now. We need to take these ring gear bolts, give them a good blast of brake clean. Then take your favorite wire wheel of death, clean the blue Loctite off of these. It's very important that you get the old Loctite off. Now factory uses blue Loctite, it's been known to come loose. We're going to put a dab of red Loctite on there, and we'll put this back together so we know that the ring gear bolts do not come out. Just take your favorite wire wheel of death here, I'm going to put them in vice actually. We're going to clean these up, reinstall. Once you get your ring gear bolts cleaned back up, I'll spray them off and brake clean one more time. Make sure they're good and clean so we can put the new Loctite on. What I like to do, I like to hold the carrier in one hand, take a dead blow, find your two alignment dowels, just give it a couple taps. You'll hear the ring change when the ring gear is fully seated to the carrier. We're going to take our red Loctite, put a drop on each bolt. It does not take much, a dab will do. And these are going to be tightened up to 45 foot pounds, plus five, up to five extra, in a crisscross manner, just like you would do when you was on a car. I'm going to chuck these up in the vise and I'm going to torque these down to 45 foot pounds. Uh, I'll be back as soon as I can. All right, once you get your ring gear bolts torqued back to 45 foot pounds, we're going to start reassembly of the bearing. Now, the bearing is a press fit, so it is a little tight. I've done enough of these that I machined out a spacer to be able to drive these back down, but you don't need the spacer. Find a socket or a piece of pipe, drive that down. You'll hear the tone change when it's fully seated. Same thing with your tone ring. Again, make sure you do not bend this. Now I have a socket, it's an inch and five sixteenths. It fits over that perfectly. Now I can drive that back down. Hear the tone change. Now this tone gear has stretched a little bit when I pulled it off. It's not a big deal. What you're going to do is you're going to take a punch. You're going to come right to the inside here. You're just going to stake it a couple times. All right, nice and tight. Remember to take your spacer on the left-hand side of the carrier, put it back on the bearing. We're ready to install back inside the housing. Now what I like to tell people when you go to install the carrier back into the housing is line up your clutch pack in there. Make sure it's nice and straight with the axle hole and make sure that your shim on this bearing is nice and straight. Set this in here just like this. Give it a couple spins. Stand it up and make sure that your axle seal did not roll out when you set that down. You're good to go. Roll that back over like that. Align your shim back up on the bearing. 
you're going to reinstall the driver's side front cover. Just like that. Line the bolt holes up, take your dead blow. Give it a little tappy tap. Spin your pinion, make sure everything still spins freely. And you're going to take your bolts or cover and put those back on. Now what makes this locker so great is it uses all the factory speed sensors and the clutch pack actuator. So your smart lock module won't even know that this locker's in here. In two wheel drive, the front tires still spin independently of each other, giving you a great turning radius and no binding in your steering. But as soon as you put it in four wheel drive, you are in true four wheel drive. You don't even have to hit the diff lock button. Just hit four-wheel drive and it gets a pinion load on and it locks both front tires together 100%. Again, these cover bolts are in a crisscross manner just like the ring bolts. This up, give it another spin, make sure everything's moving perfectly fine. Take your actuator and reinstall. Now, if you have your actuator off to remove the diff out of the machine, then leave it off and you're going to put this back on after you get the differential back inside the machine. Number torque locker inside of your smart lock differential. These uh, lockers are been proven to be really strong. I've personally tested them. I've personally tried to break them. Haven't had a failure yet. I'm not saying go out and do that, but for the price, you cannot beat these lockers. I mean, it's just, it's a game changer. And we do have a rear axle version coming out next. There's a little bit more involved into it, so I'll make another video on that. Um, now these are also, this locker is also a great setup for the guys that's wanting to do a smart lock differential swap into their machines, in their Visco machines. You just get you a smart lock, throw this locker in there. You don't need this actuator, you don't need the speed sensors, you don't need the wiring, you don't need the smart lock module for the X3 or Defender, whatever you're swapping it into. This locker is fully mechanical. As soon as it sees a load on the drive shaft, it locks in place. It is perfect for the swap guys. Makes everything so much easier. You've got a stronger differential. You've got stronger axles. It is fantastic. All right. Well, that's about all I got for you as far as the install. It's really simple, really easy. You're going to take your factory junk smart lock parts and you're going to throw them in a the trash can because you ain't never going to need them again. But also, when you go to install your axles, now that you have new side gears, you're going to put a little dab of grease in there to keep your axles from wearing into your side gears and it's also going to make it a lot easier if you break an axle you can remove the axles a whole lot easier with some grease inside them spots but that's all i got for you i'm excited about this and i'm ready to show y'all what's coming up next for the torque locker for the smart locks it's going to be fantastic all right all my torque locker fans out there if you don't have the time or simply don't want to install this locker in your front diff all you got to do is shoot me a message on Facebook or TikTok, being Cleveland X3. We'll get a handle for you. 